experience for her. Kia ora tata. Mr Speaker. Um, I call Barbara Kuriko. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We've um, heard a few speeches today that have talked about leadership. And one of the things, or one of the messages that I wanted to speak to today was around leading by example. And I'm going to get to a few things further down in my speech where I am going to refer to some things that I see that have happened in this situation that don't happen um, in the real world. OK, so I think leadership by example means that we have to set the scene and we have to act responsibly in a way that we would expect anyone else doing an investigation outside of this place to behave. So it is up to us to set the standard, and that is not a standard that's below the standard that we expect of other people. That is a standard that should be at least equal and preferably higher. Because when we talk about governance and management, there is no bigger business in this country than this government. So when we talk about uh, the workplace, this is actually a workplace that's actually much harder on the people who work here than any other workplace because of the events-based contracts and things that operate in this place. And after election, there's no place where you see people walking around in situations, particularly where there's a change of government, not knowing what their future's going to be. Now, you don't uh, get away with many of those things in what I would call the real world outside of this place. So it is really up to us to set the standard. And we talk about, in this House, and it was very clear right from the start of this government, that it was going to be open and transparent. And I don't think openness and transparency and standing up for what is right uh, is uh, delivering news on a Friday afternoon uh, in the situation of the clear current uh, dismissal or um, on a Thursday afternoon before the Prime Minister heads off to the UN. If you're going to front up, you actually need to stand up and front up and front the process right from the beginning. So I think in this place, in terms of governance and management standards and what our expectations are, there has been some mission creep. And we call it the most open and transparent government ever on the other side of the House. We dispute that on this side of the House. We also hear that we're going to have a kinder and more caring government. And in the situation around mecha fightery, yes, some allegations are disputed, but we've also heard today that some allegations are not disputed. And we hear that we're going to get uh, the report will come out. Will we get a sanitised version? We all respect the privacy of the staff member that is involved and we would expect that that privacy would be respected in any report that is delivered to us. But in terms of the actual events and the happening, will we ever know? Will the report be released in its full version? Um, we won't necessarily get the facts. So if this is an open and transparent government, apart from protecting privacy, I would expect that we would get a very open and transparent report. In unemployment law, the government of the day is always advocating for the workers. And they're always advocating against bullying in the workplace. And regardless of whether there was or well, there wasn't bruising and that at the allegation, uh, at allegation stage at the moment, it appears and, uh, that some aspect of bullying in the workplace has taken place, and that's simply not good enough. The next point I want to move on to, and we've had some discussion about the Māori caucus this afternoon, and I commend the Māori caucus for standing beside their colleague, what I would like to know from that Māori caucus or from the Prime Minister or whoever is what part did the Māori caucus play in the decision that was made? Because that is the question. It is not a question of supporting your colleague. It is a question of whether or not the Māori caucus played a part in the decision. And we've heard a bit today about the way we work and there's nothing to see here. We were simply here 
to support our colleague. Well, I would like to ask the Māori caucus today to see what sort of influence the Māori caucus is able to have on the rest of this government. Because outside, in what I like to term the real world, um, I think it's uh, really um, quite concerning where at the moment I'm looking into a situation where an investigation has been taking place uh, by a government department where the family of the person being investigated were asked to leave the house so that that person could be interviewed in private. And that, I don't believe, is acceptable. I am following that up at the moment, and it is not the first situation I have come across where people have been told that they are not allowed to have a support person when they were interviewed. So I think it's pretty um, good uh, that uh, Mika Whaiteri had so much support from her Māori caucus and they were all allowed to go along and support her during uh, part of her process with the Prime Minister. I think that we could actually extend that outside of this parliament and have a look at some of our legislation, or perhaps, I don't think it's legislation, it's probably more regulation, where we can support uh, other people, because why are we above everybody else. Um, I'm also uh, aware of a situation where a dad in a neonatal unit was hounded uh, during an investigation, um, and full well knowing that that person had been involved in a, um, as a parent of a baby in a neonatal unit. So I think it's really important that, um, as I said in the beginning, that we get the standards in this House high but we shouldn't have standards and see ourselves as above the general population. I also think it's rather interesting that in a time where we need to have so many people going into an office to support a minister, at a time when a minister is down and a minister needs support, that this is a government that has just put legislation into effect which allows warrantless searches on farmers. Now, do those people not have a right to have uh, a full and fair interview and investigation into the process? And what's even worse about that situation is that those uh, warrantless officers will probably, mostly, likely, do those investigations in people's homes and in people's farmhouse. And yet this, go and this government could not see fit to do the same thing and warrantless searches when it came to gang members. So we're looking at double standards here. We're looking at double standards. So I would, I would, I would request today, and uh, I'm sorry to uh, tell the Honourable Willie Jackson that I won't be sitting down because I've got, uh, I've got two minutes left, and it's all very well to stand up um, and you probably will be having your turn shortly and talk about the support for your minister, and that's important. Uh, point of order, the right honourable Winston Peters. No. You can say a lot of things in this House, but what you can't possibly do, and that member's been around for a little time now, is bring the speaker to the debate. So words like you can have your turn and what have you just are so de rigueur they should be stopped when they first come up. Yeah. My apologise, Mr Speaker, I did use that terminology and I wasn't bringing and you I'm into the debate. I'm standing on my feet, so you sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, it is a common misdemeanour in this House. I try not to be the referee with the whistle constantly blowing it. If I, if I did, um, that uh, ruling would be made quite often. Um, so I do want to remind members, particularly um, um, ones that have been here long enough to know better. So um, the use of the personal pronoun you should be limited. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And given that uh, a large part of my speech has been around setting standards, uh, thank you for upholding the standards uh, within the House. So I, I'm going back to my leadership, setting the standard um, process. It's very important um, in this... It's very important in this House 
that the process is kept, but I would also ask that we have a look at our processes right through this House. We always need to be cognizant of the processes in our government departments, and we should not attempt to put ourselves as Member of Parliament uh, above the laws that apply to other people in this country. So uh, there's some opportunity here, I think, for the Maori caucus to uh, advance some of the causes that they've been talking about today in terms of supporting colleagues in needs, because uh, lots of people have colleagues that are in need, and I don't think it's appropriate that some people can be interviewed without a support person, while ministers can be uh, interviewed and have the support of the Māori caucus. And uh, so we have to think about that. It's leading by example, it's setting the standard, and uh, if this government uh, is going to be true to the word and true to the speech from the throne and be a kinder and more caring government, then it should apply to the general population and not just to ministers of the Crown. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Willie Jackson. Five oh, minutes. Thank, thank you, Mr Speaker. Jeez, uh, I've got to thank that member for that advice uh, for the Māori caucus.